Hello, I'm Aristide from Metabolism of Cities and in this video we will discuss what is a circular city. First of all, a circular city is not defined by its shape. So it's nothing about, you know, medieval cities where, with fortresses around us and stuff like that. Although that might have been a very good idea in order to know exactly what comes in, what goes out, but this is another story. Anyhow, what is a circular city? First of all, it's more or less a, a city that applies circular economy. And what is a circular economy? The very simple way of explaining this is it would be a city that would reuse all of its, all of its outputs, all of the flows that exit the system as new inputs. So in another way, reuse all of its waste as resources. But when I say reuse all of its output as new inputs, it's not necessarily just recycling, it can be reusing, it can be repairing, it can be uh, remanufacturing a number of solutions. The big problem is that nowadays within cities we mostly don't have the right infrastructure to do all of these things. We don't have recycling plants within cities, we don't have uh, people that know how to uh, reuse materials, for instance, in the construction sector, this is just a tiny mar margin. More and more people that, although this used to be the case, right? Um, we don't have uh, enough people that uh, know how to repair because we have pushed them away from cities. Uh, Remanufacturing is not always an option because manufacturing activities are pushed away from the city because it's uh, the, the rent is so high. So you see that by definition or as cities have evolved, it's very difficult to have the necessary infrastructure within our cities to actually make them more circular. Therefore, you have to think that circularity within a city is something very difficult to achieve. A city will never be 100% circular, neither an economic activity because there are, uh, there are you know, thermodynamics within this. So, uh, let's say even a, a big amount of circularity is very difficult to achieve within cities. And even if we were 100% circular, imagine if we had one new person that was added to that city. Well, our circle would get just a tiny bit bigger, right? So we would reuse, but we would just need to put just the necessary amount in the circle in order for that one additional per, uh, person to satisfy its needs. That means we need some extraction as well or some addition to it. Well, cities do not have many extra extractive activities anymore as well. So it means that we need to import things from elsewhere. So once again, having a circular city is something very, very difficult. And it is so difficult because by definition, a city is a place where we accumulate things from elsewhere, we have specialized labor forces, and therefore we have put aside all of the manufacturing activities, we have put aside all of the polluting activities, and we have kept all of the activities that generate more money and are uh, less, uh, more or less clean today. So services, the service-based uh, economy. So you might say, okay, great, you, you just mentioned that we cannot make a circular city or a circular city might be an oxymoron. But let's try to think together what could a circular city look like or what can still cities do today knowing that we're part of a globalized economy and therefore we're a bit locked within global supply chains and also that we don't have the necessary infrastructure to recirculate the flows within the cities. Well, first of all, is reducing consumption. Again, remember the size of the, of the circle I mentioned before. The thinner the circle is, the easier uh, it would be to make it more circular and it will have less environmental impacts. So again, first step, recommend reducing consumption. This can be made with a number of policies. This can be made by raising awareness. This can be made through a number of things. Um, also, um, offering a number of leisure activities to your citizens, um, making your city much more livable and therefore spending more time within your city not consuming. The second and very important topic as well is to reduce 
building new things within your city. As we said, we don't manufacture a lot, so how we consume most of our, um, our materials within cities is food, but then it's also buildings. Buildings, uh, so new infrastructure, new buildings, is something that consumes a great amount of materials, but also in, in conjunction to that, all of the water, energy, and all of the other materials that they consume in order to use these buildings. So try to avoid building new buildings, especially residential buildings, because they're the ones that extract um, place from uh, creating new production activities. And I'll come back to that. So I'm not saying that you should build offices. I'm saying try to avoid building buildings that do not generate or are not linked with material flows. The third point that's very relevant to develop more circular cities is to leave enough space for infrastructure, for circular infrastructure and for local manufacturing. So what I'm saying is imagine you have a building and you want to deconstruct it and construct another building or repair this one um, and you want to reuse some materials from one building to another. In most cases, you don't have the time to, to go from one building to another building. And because of this lack of time, uh, oftentimes um, we, we choose to demolish rather than deconstruct. Another solution would be to have a place to store materials in between buildings. So having a physical storage, um, a physical material bank where um, could be a city material bank or it could be a company material bank where you can store your um, materials between two, um, between two buildings. You can think about the same thing for urban agriculture. Leave enough space in your city for growing more local foods within your city. It can be the same thing for composting. Leave enough space within your city to actually uh, compost or biodegrade uh, most of your food waste or green waste or garden waste. So all of this you see that they are competing for enough space. And when you look at uh, the market, what's more um, profitable is to, uh, it's to build new residential buildings. So that's what gets more money or offices. So that's why I'm saying try to leave enough space for your, uh, in, in your city to allow for circular infrastructures. So the same thing with manufacturing. Of course, today we cannot have in our cities the same type of infrastructure, uh, so our manufacturing activities that we had in the past. So probably you won't have a coal plant, probably you won't have a steel plant, etc. Uh, etc. Et so heavy industry, but you can still maintain some parts of industry um, and manufacturing activities that are relevant for your economy. Um, so urban manufacturing also needs space and if we don't give it space then you know uh, making more local material uh, products, uh, making more local products, making more local uh, and using therefore local materials and and also having a way to disassemble them locally will never happen. However and that's uh, one of the biggest assets of circular economy, you should start thinking about how to cross and interlink these challenges. So circular economy could provide us a way to make systemic policies. So policies that tackle many challenges simultaneously thanks to circular economy. For instance, uh, try to have, um, if you have activities uh, manufacturing activities locally that might reduce imports and that might reduce a lot of greenhouse gas emitted elsewhere but that can also start employing people from your own city that means that um, there is not uh, people that come from elsewhere to to fill in these jobs that also means that you create more local based economy that means also that you might create a, a new movement a new engagement from your citizens for all of these kind of things. Um, that also means thinking about different flows together. So how can I reduce simultaneously water, energy, materials and greenhouse gas emissions? Um, all of this is possible, uh, but you need more information, uh, more scientific studies, more engagement with academia as well. This is the last point I think in order to, to become a more circular city, you also need to define what a circular city is 
then start measuring if you're progressing towards it and therefore try to make a link between your actions and the flows because today these are you know cities more and more cities brussels paris amsterdam are going towards circular economy they're applying a number of actions but they don't have a clear idea whether where they put their money is where they have the biggest impact on circular economy we might need to wait a while to, to see if there is a direct influence between the two but if you don't have more information then therefore circular economy might never happen or happen with uh, because of other things that you never thought of that's it for now please let us know in the comments what you think about all of this what is a circular city to you and uh, what would be uh, perhaps some solutions that you would suggest thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video cheers